What does higher education have to do with leadership? Let's talk about it. Welcome to Curves Today. Thank you for being here today. We have an exciting guest from Liberty University, Dr. Joe Cox. Dr. Cox has 24 years of law enforcement experience, now retired, and he's been with Liberty University with a doctorate in leadership teaching there at the college for the last eight years. And he is a, a great story to tell on the importance of leadership and training. And we're so excited to have him today. Dr. Cox, thank you for being here. Hey, thanks so much. Thank you for what you do. And uh, I just appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to come here and share. Now, Dr. Cox, we have a lot of people listening that are in law enforcement and maybe they got into law enforcement, you know, I don't know, 15, 20, 25 years ago. And they think, you know, I don't need the education. I, I've, I've progressed this far in my career. Maybe I've been promoted a couple of times and we'll get into what Liberty specifically has to offer. But why is that education important even for that seasoned veteran? Hey, I, I, I tell you, I talk to seasoned veterans all the time. I talk to friends all the time that are, that are seasoned veterans. And you know, there's really a couple of, couple of reasons for that. Um, one, a lot of people, uh, especially people who've been on 20 years, 25 years ago, they may have gotten into uh, this industry with no education at all. And now they find themselves in a position where uh, they may want to move from, from one position, more or less a base position, if you will, for agencies that came from, be road patrol, and want to move it through supervisory ranks. And in some agencies, agencies now you find yourself where you're not able to move up through those ranks uh, and, and, and so that's a that's a huge uh, reason to do that uh, and, and then there's this, this age-old argument you know we've been talking about this for a long time the professionalism of police work uh, and professional degrees I don't care if you're an accountant I don't care if you're a doctor uh, heck you're a nurse um, you're uh, you're an engineer uh, those professions require college degrees. And if we want to be a profession, that has to link in with a, with a university degree as well. Yeah. I mean, you hit on something really important is we all in this job or even wanting to go in this job, it is considered a, a profession. And you're right. Every profession has standards. Every profession has education. Law enforcement is a little different because every state has different requirements, even from department to department. But it all starts with that education. I know we're talking about people that are on the job that want to further their job, but what about those that are near the end of their career, and maybe they want that extra step into the next career. Obviously, you found your calling, your passion after law enforcement, but everybody in law enforcement, I tell them this, everyone should be looking for that next vocation, that next profession, that next career, because as a retired law enforcement officer, you're going to have a lot of opportunities, and how can education help with that? Well, I'll go back to, to a personal story. Um, I was a, a mid-career uh, police officer, uh, just uh, gone over to our detective bureau. Uh, I was working on a we're large department, so I was a, on a specific robbery squad, um, looking at going to, uh, to homicide. And so I went to a homicide investigation school, one of the, one of the, the top two homicide investigation schools. And I'm, I'm sitting in class, first hour in the class, um, and this retired captain comes in. He goes, we'll talk about homicide investigation in a minute. Let me talk to you about the end of your career. And, and, and you know, eight years, nine years, 10 years on the job, I had this captain talking to me about, you need to plan the end of your career because there has to be something else on the other side. He goes, decide today now what that is. He goes, I'm consulting. I'm in front of others. That's what I really wanted to do. And he goes, I can tell you dozens of stories about my friends that didn't plan ahead uh, and they're basically doing nothing. They're not fuf not fulfilled uh, to that other aspect of what that might be. And so when you look at our advanced degrees, whether it be a master's degree or whether it be our PhD degree, that helps you uh, define, outline, take control is, is really a good thing to think about, take control of what um, that end of career transition to another career is going to look like versus just waiting for it to happen. And, it, and it's really a proactive approach. We're proactive in so many things. We talk about proactive policing. We have to be proactive with ourselves as well. Yeah, I mean, I attribute law enforcement to almost like a professional athlete. I mean, there's a, there's a shelf life for doing this job. It's actually a young man's game. Some of us are able to extend that out a little further. That's why many pensions are just 20 years. Now, we extend that because just of, of all the costs associated with healthcare and this and that. But it was never designed to do this as the only job you ever did. And I think so many in law enforcement, that's all they identify with. So they think they can't do anything else. And you are exactly right, Dr. Cox. 
uh, I actually contacted Liberty University with five years left to go in my profession. I'm about uh, three and a half left, but I contacted him about a year and a half ago. We'll get into that story in a minute. It's why we're talking today because Liberty has been able to offer me something I never thought I could be offered as a full-time uh, working commander, uh, busy life, busy family. And that's why I think Liberty is so valuable. As I've, as I've said to a lot of your associates there, is it's almost a big hidden secret. You know, in law enforcement, we need to spread this message. That's why you're here. And thank you so much for being here. And as you know, we talk a lot about leadership. That's all we really talk about on this show. And we have this terminology. I didn't set you up for this. So I'm, kind of, I'm not probably throwing you by surprise. We have a terminology here called okay. courageous leadership. And sure. we, of course, wrote a book on it. You can see it right here behind me. And we do seminars on that. But, I, but you've been in law enforcement for 24 years. You've seen good leadership. You've seen bad leadership. Dr. Cox, tell me what your definition is of courageous leadership. Well, I, I'll start with my definition of leadership, which is odd. I was on a, uh, an international work group uh, with Police Futurist International, uh, and it's an offshoot group of, of, of PFI. We just associated. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and so this work group I was on, we started looking at, at leadership international law enforcement leadership and what does that mean what does it look like how do you hold it how do you look at it um and then we and we said we're uh, you know the next year's conference we're going to present a definition of leadership because it's a leadership work group and so we uh, we we started with these fancy definitions of leadership and you get an entire page and then we we said every time we add an additional word it narrows the discussion versus broadens the discussion of leadership. And if we narrow it too much, we can't talk about bad leadership. So let's talk about good leadership and bad leadership. And so here's, here's my definition of leadership. It's the easiest in the world. I can give you a more complex one, influencing others. Yeah, influencing others. It's yeah. as simple as it could be. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I can get a little bit more uh, complex if I go uh, as providing people with purpose, direction, and motivation to accomplish the mission of the organization while looking after the needs of the organization and individuals themselves. I, I, you know, I can say that, but if I say, what does that boil down to? Influencing others. Yeah. yeah. And, so, and, and, and so when I look at courageous leadership and, 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 you know, throughout my career, but more salient today where you are in your career as commander, um, we have to look at that, that standing in the gap leadership. We ask our officers to stand in the gap. We, all, um, we ask our first lines to stand in that gap uh, to protect the Constitution, but don't stomp on the constitution at the same time while we're protecting it because we're always on that we're always out there uh dealing with that so courageous leadership is is really i think the ability to make the tough decisions in tough times and uh, with an with an ethical stance um with a stance in the united states that looks at our constitution um and and to be able to hold firm so the people that are following you see that level of leadership, not a, a maybe the opposite of courageous uh, leadership would be uh, acquiesce leadership, uh, where that that constant moving the the uh, situational leadership where I'm going to, um, and, and not situational leadership in, in normal terms, but uh, let me weigh out the situation and I'm going to decide this way, but on the next day with a different group of people, I'm going to do it a different way. And so courageous leadership is that strong foundation leadership that people really want to follow. Yeah, it's fascinating. And thank you for that. And, you know, I think one thing that surprised me, uh, Dr. Cox, is, is I've, I've been sort of a leadership magnet for a couple of decades now. Every, every class that comes up, I go to. I've been the FBI National Academy, your great state of Virginia, of course. Uh, I've been to IECP. I taught for IECP for a while. I mean, I have absorbed as much as I could. That quote you talked about, influence and others, I think John Maxwell stole that from you. He's got a couple of famous <laughs> quotes similar to that. Uh, but uh, I got to be honest with you, when, when I decided to go back to school, and I was 20 years away from school, so if somebody's out there watching this, and maybe they haven't been to school in, in a long time, that was me. I had got my master's degree in 1998. In fact, it was so long ago when you, you had to go to the library to study. It was, that's how long ago it was, right? We'll get into the, in all the resources that Liberty has to offer in a minute. But, uh, so I'd been away 20 years, and I was pretty timid, pretty concerned by it. I'm actually in a doctorate program in strategic leadership there at Liberty University. And when I did all my research of all the schools, I of course landed on you. And I think we'll get to why here in a minute uh, because right. of all the opportunities you have there and all the programs you have. But I got to be honest with you. I kind of thought to myself, hey, this is kind of a thing I need to do. I need to pad my resume. I'm not sure how much this is going to do for me really cognitively or leadership wise. I've been to all this stuff. And I got to be honest with you. The education there at Liberty has taken the leadership knowledge and leadership skills to a level 
that I had never obtained anywhere else. And I kind of wanted to kind of hear your, you know, hear your point of view on that because it sort of surprised me. I'm not, I'm not going to say I was arrogant about it. I just kind of thought I had been, I spent a long time in a classroom, you know, taking leadership classes. What is this online education really going to do for me? And it has surprised me in an excellent way. And I just like to hear your thoughts on that. Sure. I, I, you know, I started my, my master's degree, uh, 97, 98, 99. Um, I, I waited a, a, another um, over 10 years to start my doctorate. When I was, when I was doing my master's degree, I was on the robbery squad, carrying a pager at the time, old school, uh, and a telephone. And, and I waited till I was a, a lieutenant um, uh, down at our resort strip, you know, the busiest area we had before I started my doctorate. And it, it, it was just crazy. And, and so taking those classes helped solidify really the plan and the vision vision for our, for our master's and doctoral program here, and even boring down to our, our, our bachelor's program, um, there's a lot of universities that have it pretty good with respect to theory. And, and I can teach you an appreciation of theory. Um, typically, we'll find those, those organizations, uh, those, those universities and colleges will land their criminal justice program in the social sciences. Um, and, and Liberty, when I came here, uh, the criminal justice program landed in a very unique place, but a very proper place. It landed in the School of Government. And here's why that's, the, here's why I think it should be there. Um, if we want to train social science researchers, that's fine. That needs to get done. I'm not, I'm not going uh, to cut on that. But I think most people getting into our bachelor's, master's, and PhD programs um, want that blend to be a practitioner. They're already, most of them, especially online, are already on the job. And so I applied uh, really what I had learned uh, at the universities that I had gone to that had the really strong theoretical background. But I went, how can we, as a question, uh, how can we take that theory and be just as strong on that? And then do the difficult thing, the more difficult path is add the practitioner side to it as well. So we call it praxis model, uh, the practice and the theory blended together. And, and that's the road less traveled, it's the more difficult road, it's more difficult to pull off. Uh, but I think that the challenge is there. We're in the school of government. We're, we're part of the enforcement branch um, of the executive branch of the government, if you think about that. Um, and, and so we decided to emphasize strong theory combined with practice and then divide, uh, design the coursework around that. How can I give you the theory and the practice as well to help you become a more effective criminal justice leader. So how can you influence with our education? How can you influence in your sphere, the criminal justice industry uh, to the positive? Um, and, and, and so that was really the, the impetus behind our program development, the impetus uh, behind uh, how we blend that, that praxis model together. And so that was really our, our, what we felt our strong point would be because Liberty University allows that type of thinking. We're not fixed in a mold. It's a theory-based mold only. Uh, where a why not? Yeah, I've got I've got several friends in your criminal justice programs, and they say the same thing. It's just been absolutely outstanding. And and you know, I think the biggest burden, if anybody has looking at going back to school, is especially someone like me that school was completely different twenty years ago than it is today. Is is there's there's thousands of schools out there, and I think I think that Liberty is kind of competing against about twenty one hundred schools out there in the country with their online programs. But for me, it was simple. I needed a school. Like it or not, I needed affordability. Uh, I have three yes. kids. Uh, wife works part time. I mean, I needed affordability. I have kids in college, so I needed affordability. But secondly, I needed it to be convenient. So I needed it to be 100% online. A lot of the online programs out there will say they're online, but you've got to go to the campus once a quarter, or the campus once a year. You have to do. There's money involved with that. There's time away from work and everything else. And then I needed to be, you know, easily accessible on my own time. And I got to be honest with you, I struggled. I spent a couple of years looking at Dr. Cox. And then, yes. oddly enough, my kids, my kids at the time were going to a Christian high school. And the quarterback was recruited by Liberty University in football. By the way, congratulations going to a bowl game. Bowl Absolutely. Eligible. I hope Hugh Freeze stays, but I think he will look good in Razorback Red. But we can get into that later. <laughs> oh, we can in talk fact, about that later. Yeah, in fact, your president did not like that comment <laughs> online. He, he quit back pretty quick at me when I said that. Uh, but uh, but that was a great coach, great program. Well, so he's he's a he's actually uh, uh, they're they're at the school there. So I said, well, Liberty University. I've heard of that. You know, and I was thinking, I don't know why I was thinking of this small little quaint college in Virginia, because maybe it no. used to be in the mid-70s, right? Oh, no. 
It's not like that anymore. It's like, it's crazy. If anybody wants to go check this out, we're going to put all the links below here in the video. You'll be able to check all that out. Uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, they, I, I might be wrong here, 14, 15,000 people there on campus, almost 100,000 students online. And Liberty uh, kind of pioneered this online environment where, yes. where someone like me from three in the morning, three afternoon can do my work anytime I want. Uh, it's convenient. It rolls out in a very sequential way. It's just, it's just unbelievable. And then and I just want you to kind of talk about that because you probably have other experiences out there is, is, is what are the feedback you're getting from your students, Dr. Cox on and kind of the ease and the use of all the resources you have available. Well, certainly when you when you look at uh, what we have available, uh, we have the backbone of a brick and mortar institution with 14, 15,000 students on a well over 5,000 acre campus. If you think about that, that's an entire city. And you have a shooting uh, range, right? You actually have we, a shooting range. We have a uh, shooting range and shooting competition. Uh, cool. So uh, we have, it, we have 60, get this, we have 65 ma miles of hiking trails on this campus, 65 miles. Wow. Uh, some cities don't have that. Uh, and so when you look at that, that backbone of brick and mortar, because people always ask, are you brick and mortar as well? along with the unbelievable online presence. Um, and we're never, if you think about it, we're never satisfied. Uh, we're never satisfied with status quo. We're never satisfied with uh, enough is enough. We're never satisfied with, well, the course is working, and so let's leave it alone. Uh, we're always looking at, uh, for, for me specifically, uh, and our program is, is what is the best state of the art that we can deliver to people, and it's not fixed in time. Uh, we continue to develop the product. And, and so the comments that we hear back, some of yours are, hey, great online environment. We're always looking at that. We have people that are in charge of each individual course to make sure that they're the best that can be uh, delivered at the time and continue looking for, for better development. Um, we make it uh, very, our products very consistent with respect to online learning. So the feel of one class when you look at the syllabus is similar to the feel of the other class. Uh, is the Blackboard setups, our learning management software, are, are, are set up so they're very consistent. So you're not relearning something from a different professor that has a different perspective with respect to how a course should be delivered. And you spend, well, I, what, you know, some universities I've gone to, I've, I've, I've spent three hours just trying to figure out from professor to professor how to navigate through the learning management system because they have a different way they want it done. And so we've taken a lot of that type of apprehension out. Yeah. Um, and we put subject matter experts in those classes. So um, not only are you taking classes with people that are probably criminal justice professors, uh, professionals, because most of them are, quite a few of our professors uh, are in the trenches with you serving. And, and that's big. And so we, I think we have a really good reputation. I, at least I get the feedback. And I know we get the feedback of uh, we're very friendly to law enforcement. We're one of the friendliest campuses or a very friendly campus to, uh, to our military uh, brothers and sisters as well. And so I think that's a, uh, that's, a positive, that's a positive thing. And that's where that feedback that you're getting and, and that I get back almost daily uh, comes from. Yeah, it really is amazing. You know, I, I was someone that uh, I'm not real a technology expert whatsoever. I mean, I can play around with Microsoft Word, you know, like most people have to at work. Uh, I don't even mess with Excel, to be honest with you. Uh, and here I am. I, I entered this system, this online system, and I had, I've never even had to call the help desk. It's unbelievable. Now, if I would have had to, they, you know, they, they help you at any time of the day or night. Uh, if I needed help with my writing or papers, you have things to do that. The coolest thing is, is the library research. Of course, in the doctorate program, there's more writing than the other programs that we're going to talk about in a minute. But I mean, I just say right at my computer. I don't have to go to a library. I don't have to I mean, I'm dating myself. I don't have to pull out microfish film. I, none of this stuff. It's it's all right there, and I cannot express that enough, uh, doctor. So obviously, you guys are doing something right. But let me get to probably what everyone's thinking, and that's the cost. And I will tell you right now. I, I, obviously, I'm not going to ask you to give figures, but I looked at all the universities out there. On its face, there's nothing cheaper with the value you get. Uh, but on top of that, what really drew my attention is, is you offer a 25% discount to first responders. Talk about that program a little bit. Yeah, first responders, we, and, and we can send you the links to that so we can, we can add to this podcast. Uh, but we have a first responder discount for pretty broad spectrum of first responders, 25% discount. And that's, that's not a 25% discount that you can't find. And it is a true 25% discount. Um, and so I, I think that helps first responders um, that, uh, to, to be able to enter a program that will be a value 
add um, and, and, and truly get that, that off versus here's one price and, and it's really not that price we discount for everybody. No, that, that's, it's a true program. Uh, we offer corporate partnerships as well, and we'll send you some information on the corporate partnerships. I think that's, in, that's important. Um, and, and we have somebody that's in charge of developing those corporate partnerships. And so as an example of that is uh, a, a, a public safety agency, um, would like to enter into a partnership with Liberty University. We'll give specifics on that, so I won't do so much here, but uh, there's an additional uh, discount that can be uh, stacked with, um, can, that can actually be stacked with, um, uh, with a 25%. And so when you stack a 15% discount, if your agency is willing to enter into a corporate partnership, and there's no cost to that, by the way, uh, you're at a 40% discount now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, how do you, how do you, how do you, how do you do that? Well, and, and, and the feedback I've had is um, we are so competitive against other privates and state uh, universities. And, and again, you don't have to come to our campus and, and the convenience of it. And so that's one of those things that I think is, is, and you're hitting the nail on the head is, is that between the 25% first responder and the 15%, um, I'm looking at a note right here right now, uh, and that's military discount. Undergraduates, military discount, $250 a credit hour. Graduate yeah. Yeah. for military discount, $275 a credit hour. Uh, I don't mind saying that, you know, right right here in our in the in this podcast. That's an unbelievable no, rate. It's not only unbelievable, it beats it's beating public schools. I mean, my wife is looking at, I won't tell you this right now, my wife's looking at the University of Missouri at a master's degree. And I'm like, that is more expensive than Liberty. Why would you not do that? And so, and so I got to be honest. I mean, everyone in law enforcement is listening to this. Is, we're cynical by nature, as you know, Dr. Cox. I'm going to yes. put the links below <laughs> where you will see right, right off the bat that this is true. I was cynical. And let me tell you how sure. easy it was. I literally, I'll never forget the day I did it. I took a photograph of my commission card and I emailed it to the email that you guys told me to email it to. And within 24 hours, I, I get this email with this, with this reduction cost. In fact, a friend of mine just entered a PhD program. He was a reserve officer, but, he's, but he has not been a reserve officer for two years, but I believe he was in active status for within the last five years. He did the same thing and immediately got that tuition reduction. So it really is uh, unbelievable what, you, what you've done. Pass on my thanks to all the leadership there because it takes a lot of work and a lot of sacrifice because you certainly don't have to offer the discount. You would get plenty of students right. without it, but you're providing uh, men and women that maybe don't have as much resources as we'd like to be able to go back to school. And by the way, even if you don't have that, that semester by semester money, because you are uh, you know, full-fledged uh, you know, Division I uh, accredited school, you have access to all the federal assistance and all the grants and all that. It's just really phenomenal. So please pass on my sincere gratitude to everybody for making that happen because I know there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. Yeah, thank you so much. And, and we even um, stack the military and first responder discounts. So those are the wow. if, if you if you're former military, then let's look at let's look at the uh, the first responder discount and see what we can do for you. I, and, and I'll tell you, um, before we had the degree programs we had, and and you know we 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 both went to degree programs at a different time. I um, when I was getting my doctorate, I was paying a thousand fifty an hour. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's talk about the programs that you can offer law enforcement specifically. And I know you have a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. You have a master's degree, you have a PhD, but let's talk about, uh, you know, let's talk about first let's talk about the bachelor's degree. Do you have a completely online bachelor's degree? Let's say you're somebody with, I'm going to say I have 30 hours of college. Uh, I took, you know, 10 years ago. What does that look like for me if I want to try to get my full degree there at Liberty? First thing we're going to do is, is advise you to go through our, our online portal. We can give you a link for that. I think you have it, online portal. And um, our folks uh, can take a look at um, the, the college credits that you already have. And this is at the, the undergraduate level, master's and PhD level. So we'll take a look at what you already have uh, and then outline what, what we're willing to offer you credit for. Uh, and then uh, look at some of your life experiences as well. Uh, and for a lot of us, you know, we went through a police academy, and especially for criminal justice, bachelor's degree. Um, we need to look at, the, look at what your police academy looked like. What continuing education have you had with, with your police department. And we'll even take a look at that to see if it's relevant to any of our, our classes. So it's, it's not only what you said is bringing um, maybe some credits that you have from, from going to college a while back, but it's also some life experience 
what does that academy look like? What other classes have yeah. you been to? Um, you've been to FBI National. Uh, what courses you take by uh, at FBI National uh, with respect to undergraduate or graduate courses, and, and what can we do with that? So we look at the entire package, not just, you know, a lot of places may look just kind of single source. We're going to look at the entire package um, and then uh, give you a glimpse at what it's going to look like for you to finish your degree. And, yeah. and that, that's a significant thing to do. Yeah, because you're not, you're, you're, somebody may be sitting there thinking, man, I, don't, I can't spend four or five years, but they may not have to start from ground zero, especially with that life experience and with a few college hours in the background. It's going to really accelerate things. And, and how are your classes typically made up? I know I'm in the, a doctorate program. They're eight-week classes, which is really great because I can focus on one or two classes in an eight-week time period and get to the next one. It's not long and drawn out. It's really helpful. Is that how most of your programs are set up, Dr. Cox? Online, uh, that's how the programs are set up in eight-week segments. Uh, the only time that we, we lengthen up a little bit uh, in our criminal justice PhD is when you get to your dissertation phase. Uh, we don't want to rush you through those courses, so we slow those down just a little bit and go mm -hmm. to a, a little bit longer format. Uh, and that is not anything for us. It's for student success. And so mm -hmm. uh, most of the classes, uh, all the bachelors, all of the, um, all of the master's, 98% of the PhD on that eight week format. Uh, all classes, I believe all classes are offered every semester. Uh, and we run eight week semesters. Um, and not necessarily, we, we call them a little bit different name, but basically eight week semesters uh, year round. And yeah. so uh, you don't have to take that summer off. You can, you can keep on going. And so that's powerful too. If you go, I want to get a four year degree. Can I do it, you know, quicker? Well, Let's bring some credits. You might have been to a law enforcement academy. You may have some life experience that we can bring in there. Um, and then if you go year round taking multiple, you know, two at a time, uh, twice a, a normal semester, we call them subterms, uh, and through the summer, um, you're going to speed up that, uh, that, that begin to end date uh, significantly. Yeah, and the cool part is, unlike where I used to go to school many, many years ago, if a class came up, you had to take it because it may not come up for another year or two right. well, at Liberty. That class is coming up every eight weeks uh, yes. because it's the way you do it. So that's been nice because I've liked to I jump around a little bit. Don't tell anybody. But if I see a really <laughs> tough class coming, I don't feel like it. I may I may skip around and, and put that one on hold. But I'm able to do that because that class is available every eight weeks. And what I love about your criminal justice program specifically is, is the different tracks you have. You've got yes. Homeland Security, you've yes. got forensics, uh, you've got uh, cyber crimes, but you've got a new track, especially in your master's program, which I've, I've looked at your master's program in criminal justice. And I was, I, I always like looking at those programs at different universities because that's what I have my master's degree in. So I love looking at that. I can't really find one that is as robust as what you're offering, but you just came out with a track on leadership and I think yes. that's going to be very important to our to our listeners and to our viewers. Kind of tell us about that, Dr. Cox. Right. You know, if you if you look at uh, uh, SPI, uh, uh, Southern Police Institute, if you look at FBI National, um, if you look at some of the the local command college, Texas has a, a a ton of command colleges. We have one here in Virginia as well, hosted by Virginia State Police. Um, if you if you look at those. Um, a lot of the classes, some of the classes are leadership focused. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I like to say, uh, kind of back up a little space, every officer is a leader. Uh, you know, name of a book and, and every officer is a leader. That you, you might be a 21-year-old on your first call after you're released from field training and, and, and people have called you there to solve a problem. In other words, to influence what goes on. That's leadership. Yeah. And that, you may be 21 years old and one day, but that's leadership. And so then when we start to talk about a master's degree, uh, advanced skills, especially in our program, we go, a, a lot of folks uh, are going to be uh, early to mid-career getting that master's degree. Uh, and they may in part be doing that for promotability, uh, uh, future jobs, and really the backbone of a police department, you can make or break, you know, we have management and, and that's tasks yeah. and getting our tasks done all the time. But leadership is what creates the backbone of that department. Courageous leadership makes the backbone of that department. Leadership uh, influences job embeddedness and how, how much do people want to stay or is there a toxic environment where we're losing people and it's just due to leadership. And so leadership is that backbone and, and especially with today's environment, um, looking at certain skill sets that we can help train people in to help them become more effective leaders. Um, you know, I, I always say if, if, if 
if we can't train, a lot of people call leadership a trait that you're born with and you never, you never can't get any more of it. Um, I wholesale disagree. It, it, it is uh, an art and a science. Um, there are nuances to it, but we can always learn one more thing and one more thing about leadership. And so this is just a tag on to kind of that, that mantra, if you will, is, is we can help you with, with this leadership, this influencing others and how to be more effective in doing that. If you think about it, you know, one of the prevalent things today, and I've, I've dealt with this in my career, um, is uh, civil rights violations, especially under uh, Section 1983. Uh, and a lot of times, I hate to say we learn by the school of hard knocks when a, a lawsuit comes out. Uh, and, and so one of our classes in our master's degree in leadership program is, 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 um, is uh, civil rights. And, and how do we deal with civil rights with law enforcement officers as a leader? looking at it not on the ground level as much, but that hovering over, how do I create an environment uh, where we're respecting, uh, we're respecting other civil rights and how to build that. And, um, you know, we look at evidence-based policing today and we, you know, we, you know, IACP every year has something about evidence-based policing or, or hotspot police, uh, policing or intelligence led policing or, you know, comp stat, you know, whatever type of modeling that we're using, um, Leaders need to be able to recognize, understand, appreciate, and use um, uh, that type of uh, that type of information. And so, we look at strategic intelligence for a law enforcement officer on that master's level. That that mid career person, um, let's train them in advance or give them a better appreciation if they're already in that career position uh, to be able to look at what a strategic intelligence look like at a little bit larger level. And 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 then a, a tour of law enforcement leadership. You know, our, our base master's degree in criminal justice has a leadership and ethics class. Uh, great book, I think. Um, and it, it combines this, 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 this idea of leadership and ethics, and it's just a, a primer. But then we follow on on that leadership track with a little bit more advanced topics in leadership. Uh, so it's, again, it's building a skill set. It's not a one shot. You have leadership. You don't get a shot. You don't have leadership. It's, it's one more backbone class and looking at a couple of other leadership concepts. If, if you've taught for, uh, for uh, IECP, leadership and police organizations, you know, we have dozens of theories in that when I, when I used to teach that dozens of theories that we go over uh, of leadership and each one of those are different and different applications and so I think that's that's something that that's important to go over uh, and then today's environment versus 25 30 years ago uh, is homeland security uh, and, and how do we administer that how do we how do we police in the context of homeland security um, where we used to not worry about that at all really uh, and, and now we can't afford not to worry about that, but we want to teach the leadership aspect of that. And, and we'll talk about the PhD in a minute. It's, it's even more exciting uh, than what, what we just spoke about. Yeah. I mean, it's fascinating. You know, uh, one of my favorite quotes uh, is good is the enemy of great. And I think so many of us in law enforcement, uh, we're in a pretty good place. We're in a comfortable place, but that comfort can be pretty damaging. And I would just encourage everybody to just hit the link up we have in the description. Just get the information. That's how I started. I had no idea I was going to start going to school there. And, you know, I, this, we're not being paid for this interview. This is just something that we are passionate about. Those of you that have been paying attention to us here at the Courageous Leadership Institute knows that if we find a resource that can help you as a leader, we're going to pass that along to you. And this is one of the, the best ones out there. Now, obviously, you got a few people out there that uh, maybe they are looking at that PhD program or they're thinking to themselves, man, there is no way I could accomplish that. You know, I, I've heard all the horror stories about the doctorate programs and PhD programs. Well, I'm here to tell you right now that if I can get 15 hours through the program, anybody can. That's, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> but kind of tell us about what you have to offer there at that level and how that can really take you to the next level, either in this career or the next. You hit the nail on the head with that last comment. Um, and, and what I've seen is this, as I, as I go around the country and, and talk to police chiefs and police chiefs that may be looking for a career change within, uh, maybe looking at a larger agency to become a, a police chief, I'm looking at a lot of police chiefs that have multiple master's degree to try to set themselves apart. And then I look at the difficulty uh, in a police chief uh, or deputy chief or major or captain getting into a PhD program uh, to not have two or three master's degree, but have their master's degree, then their PhD to be even more competitive. Uh, and so uh, we designed our PhD program uh, to, to help with that competitiveness, mm -hmm. but also in career, other career choices. And so uh, we, again, bridge that, that very interesting gap 
that um, there were some police, I saw police professionals that were, uh, that were asking for a PhD program that they could take without having to take time off and, and travel somewhere, but is just as rigorous as any other program that would help them out with their present job, but set them up for maybe a research or teaching job after they retire. And so we just kind of, we, we set forth to look at what the industry had and then make it better. Uh, and so when you look at our PhD program, you know, a, a lot of PhD programs are theory based. First class you take is going to be a theory class. Theory is a crime. Why not? I mean, that's just a backbone to a, a criminal justice PhD program. But it, it, then we take a tour uh, of looking at different criminal justice systems, at this comparative criminal justice systems. What does it look like in different nations? If you're a leader, you can teach that, but if you're a, a leader, you need to appreciate, especially depending on the agency you work for, what does law enforcement look like in other countries that you may be dealing with? Uh, and so we have that comprehensive course that covers that. But then a, a lot of PhD programs will talk about uh, corrections, theories and a lot of a lot of them will talk about um, maybe juvenile justice theories well we spin that and we talk about corrections policy in juvenile justice policy if you're going to be an influencer let's learn how to influence from the policy side of it versus just the theory side of it and so we turn that that theory class into a praxis class by emphasizing policy and then you know, then we move into uh, this leadership cognate. We have another advanced focus, I think, that, that looks good. And let, let, let me just mention uh, one class that, that I just love. Um, and, and this comes up all the time uh, when we're looking at uh, uh, police suicide. Uh, we look at uh, the symptoms of police stress. Um, and, and I see a lot of symptoms of police stress, and, and we're trying to treat these symptoms, and we need to go to the core. We need to ask why four and five and six times to get to the root causes and look at those root causes. So here's a class that we put into uh, as, an, as an optional class in our advanced focus is um, stress management and criminal justice. It's not criminal justice stress. It's stress management. It's how as a leader do you create a culture of stress management and create stress management programs. That's a different twist on that. And so that's a leadership class, but it's just in our, it's in our normal core uh, as an option uh, for, uh, for students in that PhD program. Then we really dive deep in this leadership cognate, uh, a deeper dive in advanced leadership skills. And so it's their building blocks. Uh, certainly the master's degree has a building block and then we just build, build into that. Something that a lot of us learn by the school of hard knocks and, and, and we can talk about this in a leadership or a management perspective. It's easy to go back and forth. Uh, strategic leadership. Uh, or strategic planning in leadership. A lot of times you learn uh, as, a, as a new chief of police uh, or maybe someone on staff, um, the, the torch has been passed for strategic planning. Uh, there's never any formal training on that, but if you get your strategic planning down right, all the way from mission, vision, value, goals, and then setting that strategic plan, uh, it's easier to direct uh, organizations. It's easier to set culture of organizations. It's easier to drive budget in organizations. Uh, and they shouldn't be uh, separate. Uh, you know, a proper strategic plan should relate to budget, not just be there because we have to create one. Uh, it should drive mission, vision, value, goals, and be based upon those things, not because it's a block we have to check, but we have to drive it. So we really drive that uh, strategic planning focus. And could you go to another school, uh, a business school or something else, and learn about strategic planning? Sure. Ours is painted blue. Ours is strategic planning for law enforcement and the particular nuances that we have, the difficulties that we have in criminal justice and, and all, everything you do in that class is based upon that. And then we look at, you know, a lot of times we'll take a human resource class, we'll take, uh, and, and maybe based off of public administration or something like that. Uh, we look at human resource development as a class. And, and I think there's a big difference if I say human resources management versus develop. Uh, we always need to be, as leaders, we always need to be um, looking at who the future is and how we develop them. Right. Uh, and so this leadership class is based on how do we develop those around us? 
uh, to be future leaders of the organization from the lowest level to the to the highest level. Who's going to bring the organization uh, further than what we've been able to, to bring it uh, because we trained them in that way that they'll be able to take the torch up and run with it, go even further than what we could do to add excellence to the organization and more purpose to the organization. Uh, and so that, that class is really designed around how do we create the systems necessary to do that versus just learning the theory behind it. Are you going to get the theory? Absolutely, positively, yes. Are we going to teach you the, the praxis of it, putting it into play? Absolutely, positively, yes. It's unbelievable stuff. Dr. Joe Cox, Liberty University, they've provided everybody listening, everybody watching an incredible opportunity. Just hit the link below and just get the information. You're not having to sign away your life or anything. Get the information and see for yourself the value here. If you want to reach out to me personally, I can put you in touch with Dr. Cox, or I can tell you my personal story of how, how important and valuable this, these programs have been for me on a personal level. Dr. Cox, Thank you so much for being with us today, taking the time out and uh, giving us this incredible information. Great. I appreciate it. And thank you for the work that you do, uh, not only this podcast, but uh, what you do for your agency. And, uh, and stay safe out there. And may the men and women on your department stay safe as well. Dr. Joe Cox, Liberty University, you've been watching Courage Today. Thank you for being here.